Yeah, I'll react to that, sure. Okay, guys. Excited for this one. I am. Hope you are. Preemptive like. I'm just gonna give a subscribe because it's this channel has this type of content. Uh, Animographs. Almost a million views in three days. Uh, how an 18th century sailing battleship works. Okay. My name's Connor. Hi. I like to learn about things on YouTube. And let's go. Hello. Uh, the original link to the video, top of the description. Below that, link to the Discord. Love to have you. Click on it. Send you right over there. Let's go. I've been always looking for a video like this. I'm Jake O'Neill, creator of Animographs, and this is how an 18th century sailing battleship worked. We've based our model on the HMS Victory, which was first launched in 1765. Phones away. However, our goal is to present... I'm talking over sh stuff. <laughs> All right, go. We've based our model okay. on the HMS Victory, which was first launched in 1765. However, our goal is to present a high-quality teaching model with period-correct generalizations, as opposed to a history lesson on the Victory herself. I wonder if that back sail is to act as, like, assistance to the rudder in really sharp turning. Let's start with a frame, which is constructed primarily from oak wood, with some elm, pine, and fir. Timbers are joined, for example, by pinning diagonal surfaces together in a scarf joint, secured with wood or metal fasteners, and then formed into the desired shapes. Floor beams are connected to these vertical timbers and supported by horizontal and vertical knee braces. The shell or hull of the entire ship is formed in this way. Thick planks enclose the frame inside and out. At the waterline, the hull is nearly two feet thick. It's a floating tank clad in wooden armor. The masts, the tallest of which tower some 200 plus feet above the water level, are supported at each floor as they extend to the massive keel beam at the ship's very bottom, where they're anchored with large wooden blocks called steps. Makes sense to have them all the way down there. At the exterior, the hull below the waterline is covered with copper plating to protect against harmful marine growth and for improved water tightness. Now, let's tour each floor, starting with the hold in the belly of the ship. The hold is the main storage area. A bed of rocks provides draining and stability for stored items, as well as ballast, which is weight added to balance the ship. The victory... When he says draining and stability, does he mean like, uh you put any barrels that can possibly leak on top of the ballast rocks so that it doesn't, like, form a, a pool or something? A bed of rocks provides draining and stability for stored items, as well as ballast, which is weight added to balance the ship. The Victory had 38 tons of extra ballasting on one side when built. Iron blocks were also used to supplement ballast weight. There are wooden ventilation ducts at the fore and aft for improved air quality. At the back of the hold, there are 10 tons of Rain? flower storage. Oh. The nearby spirit room holds 50 tons of beer. The main area carries 300 tons of water, 50 tons of coal or wood fuel. 20 tons of timber for repairs or other needs, 30 tons of salted meat, 45 tons of biscuits, 15 tons of peas, and 2 tons of butter, among many other items. A shot locker holds 120 tons of cannonballs and other projectiles. A hold well collects water in the lowest part of the ship to be pumped out. 
the Grand Magazine store. One hundred a hold well. A hold well. Collects water in the lowest part of the ship to be pumped out. Do they have like an Archimedes screw so that? How would they do that? Uh... The Grand Magazine stores 35 tons of gunpowder and is lined with copper to keep the powder dry, protect it from sparks, and keep rats out. In the nearby filling room, sailors prepare gunpowder cartridges for the ship's cannons, called guns. The Orlop deck is above the hold and straddles the water line. As such, there are no side openings to provide light or airflow. There's a network of removable floor gratings through every deck at the ship's center line for ventilation and for transferring items, including cannons and so on, throughout the vessel. At the rear of the Orlop deck, additional gratings provide more ventilation for the hold. This is the bread room. I'm, uh... Okay, I just wanted to be in and make sure I was in view. Sorry. Nope. With flour and ink. At the rear of the Orlop deck, additional gratings provide more ventilation for the hold. This is the bread room with flour and biscuit storage readily available for meals. Daily rations are dispensed from the steward's room to mess cooks. The steward may sleep here if needed to prevent food theft. The steward's appointed cabin is nearby. There's the purser's cabin and store for the purser who handles accounts and money. And a marine's clothing store. Across the other side, there's a dispensary for medical supplies. The surgeon has their own cabin here for sleeping. A clothing store or a store for clothing? Because, like, like they could buy their own new clothing if they wanted, or? Marine's clothing store. Across the other side, there's a dispensary for medical supplies. The surgeon has their own cabin here for sleeping and performing mostly non-battle-related procedures. There are also oh. stores for the captain and lieutenant. A large area in front of these rooms is the midshipman's berth for junior ranking officers, usually in their teenage years. Hammocks are hung here for sleeping. Front and back hanging magazines hold racks full of ready-made gun cartridges, which are specially prepared sacks of gunpowder for cannons. So they seem to store... I wonder how they get the cannonballs up. The cannonballs seem to have been stored in, an, in a strange area. I want to know how they, they hoist those up or something. But uh, interesting how they have a separate area for the, the gunpowder storage and the barrels. And then they have an area where the ready cartridges are. And so I'm assuming it's the job of a person or people uh, to, you know, replenish, to like, re -put, so like when these are gone, there's someone like putting the gunpowder from the barrels into the bags and then putting them back on the rack. The hanging magazines are framed between decks, suspended in a fashion for enhanced protection from catastrophic damage sustained in action. Light comes from an adjacent room with a lantern behind glass panes for safety. Risk. There are hatches throughout the Orlop deck floor called scuttles. Many of these are in strategic areas for guarded access to the ship's valuable stores in the hold beneath. The cockpit area in the middle of the floor is used to treat crew members during battle. Moving towards the front of the ship, sail rooms provide storage for sails when not in use or when held for repairs. Cable tiers hold coils of anchor cable or ropes with open walls to allow proper drying. 
There are cabin and storerooms for the bosun, who oversees some of the deck crew. The bosun stores have items related to rigging, cordage, anchors, sails, boats, flags, and so on. The onboard carpenter has a cabin and fully stocked workshop for ship maintenance and repair. A narrow passageway along each side of the Orlop deck, called the Carpenter's Walk. Guys, I question, uh, or maybe no one knows it, but I, I wonder if for some of the jobs like surgeon or carpenter, if they had people whose main job wasn't to be a surgeon or a carpenter, but who main job was uh, uh, something else, but they knew enough about carpentry or like. Uh, medical stuff to where if the carpenter or or surgeon doc, onboard doctor whatever you want to call it gets injured or killed that they're not just like all right how do we do this i i wonder if they just make sure that for the crucial minimal i, I explained what i meant if they have someone it's like all right your job is you know you do this but in case you you do know a little bit about carpentry right to be the backup ensures unobstructed access to the hull at the waterline, which is especially important for any damage sustained in this critical area during action. At the front of the Orlop deck, there's the gunner's store for all things related to armaments, including rifles, pistols, and supplies for the many onboard cannons. Lower gun deck. Heavier Lower gun guns deck is down built to support below. 30 guns of the 32 pounder class, weighing in at over 100 tons in total. 32 pounder refers to the 32 pound shot these guns are designed to fire. Guns are maneuvered for aiming through a system of ropes and pulleys at either side and at the rear. Tools with long handles are mounted above the gun. Sailors must lean out of the gun port to access the barrel. In order of usage for firing, the worm with a metal spiral at its end is inserted into the barrel and turned several times to catch any unburned bits left inside. Next, the wet sponge extinguishes any remaining embers. A cartridge the is left. That's to prevent any... Uh... That's the the sponge. I'm guessing is extremely important because it reduces the, ch it gets rid of any sparks that might immediately set off the charge in the cannon. Also, I wonder if they, you know, we're at eight twenty seven. If they had a system of like, say, you're in battle and it's gonna be super loud, but of like, hey, we have two. Like rope men, I'm not sure what the real name is, but like two casualties over here. And would they have a system of like, all right, um, they have zero, you go and help them do this. And I wonder if there was any competitiveness uh, between gun teams or, or am I just, no? In order of usage for firing, the worm with a metal spiral at its end is oh, inserted sorry. into the barrel and turned sponge extinguishes any remaining embers. A cartridge is loaded and rammed home with the rammer. Then a shot, round or otherwise, is loaded and also rammed home. Nearby fire buckets hold water or sand for fire extinguishing. Wooden poles lift the barrel to allow adjustment of a wedge at the back, which controls gun pitch. A thick rope limits rearward roll due to the powerful recoil after a shot is fired. Wait, how? Which controls wooden poles lift the barrel to allow adjustment of a wedge at the back. Which controls gun. Oh, oh, oh! I was gonna say how. Okay, all right. I was confused as how, how are they lifting this up? The, uh, uh, the, I, yeah, I, I see. A thick rope limits rearward roll due to the powerful recoil after a shot is fired. At the 
front of the lower deck, there's a manger where animals are sometimes kept. Anchor cables enter the ship through holes at the bow and can also be laid here for temporary storage or drying. When did they switch to chains instead of ropes for anchors? Sturdy wooden structures called bits, whose beams extend to the deck below for added support, provide tie-off points for anchor cables to prevent any movement while anchors are deployed. Guys, <laughs> Whose me... beams extend to the deck structures called bits. Whose beams extend to the deck below for added support. Provide tie-off points for anchor cables to prevent any movement while anchors are deployed. Moving further back, there are four bilge or chain pumps with long handles so that many sailors can operate them in unison. How do they work? How do pumps work? These pumps remove water from the hold well. The cranks drive a chain with leather discs. I guess because it's leather. How, how do they get such a tight... My, it's always my question with this or the Archimedes screw. It's like, how do they get it so like they're a bun uh, water isn't like squeezing in between and just going down to the next rung? It's obviously a pretty tight fit. And maybe... I mean, obviously it works. I just, just make it up. It's pretty cool, genius to lift water up into removable wooden tubes on the deck floor. The guide pump water to drains at the ship's side. All four pumps operating simultaneously can move 465 gallons of water per minute out of the hold. Wow. In front and behind the pump area, there are large rotating capstans for hauling in the anchor cables. Thank you for using gallons. More on this process later. In the same area, there's also an elm tree pump, so-called for the rot-resistant elm wood used in its construction. These general-purpose pumps draw up seawater from a hole in the bottom of the ship for cleaning or fighting fires. Smart again. What's so cool about... I've been deck. pausing too much. 28 guns of the 24-pounder class are positioned along the middle gun deck. Lighter guns as you go up. Shot garlands with projectiles line the grating and stairways called ladders at the center. The ship's main entry port is situated in the middle. There's a dedicated sick bay at the front. Behind that, the main galley for food preparation and distribution for some of the officers and all of the regular crew members, with a large iron stove that exhausts through upper decks to the outside. The stove includes a water condenser for distilling fresh water from salt water. Capstans That's at the cool. center are connected to those of the middle deck below. The rear of this deck has officers' quarters and the wardroom for officers to eat and congregate with a nearby pantry. The panel walls are either folded up and secured or carried away entirely to make space for guns during action. As such, those inhabiting these quarters often share the limited space with onboard guns. A wooden cover at the back can be removed to expose the rudder, especially for emergency access. Upper gun deck. The upper gun deck like holds 30 pound, 12 pounder guns. Pound. Moving to the front of the deck, roundhouses at either side are accessible to officers for a more private restroom experience. Sailors of lower ranks must venture outside the ship entirely to the forecastle, where there are six open-air toilets called seats of ease. Simple canvas partitions form a small sick bay as needed. Non-commissioned officers' cots can be hung nearby for sleeping. There's a skylight for the galley below. Nearby chests hold rifles and pistols. 
removable tables are slung between guns, with equipment chests as benches. There's a bag that holds flogging ropes and the famed Cat of Nine Tails for disciplinary action. Being Heading aft, drunk or stealing food. there's the Admiral's sleeping quarters, dining quarters, Ooh, nice ship with the can. I mean, that's cabin. nice uh, table. The nearby quarter gallery has a private toilet as well. As with other floors, wall paneling can fold out of the way or be removed to clear the floor for action. Quarter deck. The captain's accommodations make up the rear of the quarter deck. What are these going to be like six pound cans? Including a private toilet, day cabin, dining area, and sleeping cabin with the captain's relatively luxurious hanging bed. Moving forward, there's a cabin for the captain's personal secretary. And the shipmaster's cabin at the other side. What's a ship? The steering master? wheel sits at the center, exposed on one side but shielded overhead by the poop deck floor. A single rope wraps around the steering drum so the and rudder. extends through the quarter deck floor, passing through the upper and middle deck floors to the ceiling of the lower deck where pulleys redirect the rope as it spreads to either side of the arced tiller sweep. Metal rings in the tiller arm guide the rope to tensioning gear. At One of the most enjoyable things about videos like this, I've said many times, I, 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 I would love to learn more about the evolution of ships. And I think the Industrial Revolution sort of, that's when I, I think it gets more boring. Um, but just... But right before the like the Napoleonic Wars, like uh, like the HMS Victory, of just the peak of of wooden sailing warships, and I love just seeing all of the little things that uh that 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 are incorporated into it that just make me think of 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 how they thought of that of just like it must have been a very trial and error step by step. Oh well, we can't really uh, turn it well. So, you know, get that, that pulley system that, that goes up there and whatever this is, tensioning gear, and just all the little things that they, they just add on and I'm sure add on and add on over years. It's just so cool. It makes me think what, how, like what went wrong that made them put this here. How many, how many boats had to be hit and blown up sky high before they realized to really shield it with copper, the, the, the gunpowder? put a lamp in it, but cover it with glass, like all that kind of stuff. Either side. You know, put ballast and, well, I'm sure ballast is a thing for a long time. Tensioning gear at either side. As the wheel rotates, ropes move, guiding the tiller gracefully along its arc. The attached three-story tall rudder swings on metal hinges, which are fastened tight to the keel. Focusing back to the quarter deck, there's a binnacle in front of the ship's wheel which holds two compasses for redundancy and so that sailors on either side of the wheel may take accurate readings. A lamp sits at the center with a small chimney to let off lantern smoke. A row of fire buckets hangs from the poop deck beams above. Various 12-pounder guns line the sides. Also 12-pounder. The center of the quarter deck is open to the upper deck below, with skid beams and cradles to secure various onboard boats. There's the launch, which is the largest boat, able to handle Take the anchors or a ship's cannon. Oh. Pinnacle boats transport senior officers, while the barge is for the admiral. Cutters, the smallest and fastest of the boats, are mostly used for emergencies. During battle action, all of these boats are used in some capacity. There's a belfry and bell nearby. 
The frontmost part of the quarterdeck is called the forecastle, hearkening to older ships where this area was raised up from the deck. There are two 68-pounder carronade-style guns at either side. They I do notice that older ships, like, uh, you know, Spanish, like, or Elizabethan times or, like, uh, Spanish Empire in its heyday, earlier ships, like, during the Age of Exploration, where it seemed like they were high in the back. They were, they were like a U-shape, like, high in the back, high in the front. A special two 68 pounder carronade style guns at either 68 what is called the forecastle hearkening to older ships where this area was raised up from the deck there are two 68 pounder carronade style guns at either side they use a special sliding frame for aiming and recoil with small wheels underneath i thought the point of i thought i mean there are i guess there's only two but i thought you put the heavier guns lower on the ship for stability but frame for i mean i guess there's just two of them aiming and recoil with small wheels underneath the large heavy shot paired with a shorter thinner barrel uses less gunpowder to deal maximum damage at close range oh maybe the cannon isn't necessarily okay poop deck ah. the short poop deck is a raised section at the rear its name derives from the french when word for stern it. la poop which I suspect would somehow sound even funnier among age groups predisposed to such humor. Right, I know. A skylight illuminates the captain's dining quarters below. Like me, 29. There are light illuminates the captain's dining quarters below. There are cranes called davits on both sides for hoisting items to and from the ship, including the onboard boats. Shelves at the rear contain many flags for signal. How do you get the onboard boats to the cranes? Hammocks. So far, we've seen hammocks for officers and other higher ranking individuals. Wait, seriously, how, okay, you got cranes, but the boats are over here. Even if you can carry them to the side, how do you... Oh, I guess you can carry them over here and then attach them I, uh, However, uh, most of the ship's 800 plus crew were barely allotted a shoulder's width of space in which to occupy their respective hammocks. Sardines. Cannons are secured to the ship's sides to make room for sleeping sailors. While decks can accommodate many hammocks this way, because of watch routines aboard the ship, only half of the crew would be asleep at one time. During action, rolled hammocks. Oh, so it never actually. Okay, so they never actually slept like that. Just like half. Are stacked sleep at one time. During action, rolled hammocks are stacked in side netting to make a protective barrier around the quarter and poop decks. Hammocks are also regularly transported above decks to be aired out. <laughs> Imagine. Anchors. The ship like, carries to not seven fall anchors. Off. The bower's anchors at the front are the main set, with a backup pair of anchors slung nearby. These heavy anchors weigh around 10,000 pounds apiece, with the cables weighing even more. There's a crane. God dang it, what I do? All four pumps operating simultaneously can move four in the massive eight inch diameter in a beam weighing even more. The ropes? I mean, I know ropes aren't light, but are you saying telling me that the ropes themselves weigh more than the than that hand than the anchor? There's a crane on either side in a beam called the cat head, which is used to safely lower the anchors from their ship side perch. Once in position, the massive eight inch diameter anchor cables handle the rest. Depending on the scenario, raising and lowering anchors could be grueling work, taking hours and involving many sailors. Capstans are vertically connected through the lower and middle decks. Guns are rotated as ladders and pillars are carried away to make room for large removable wooden bars. With six or more sailors to oh, bar, that's cool on both decks. The capstans can accommodate tens to hundreds of sailors at a time. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So sixty and sixty. So one twenty, three. 
Do that. I can't count. 240. The anchor cables are too thick to warp around the capstan base. Instead, a messenger rope makes a loop, winding around the capstan. And it's attached to the bigger rope. And passing behind pillars at the front. As the capstan turns and the messenger rope travels, crew use sections of rope called nippers to tie the anchor cables to the messenger line, and they both move together. And then release it when it gets... This is what I'm talking cables about. Pass I just decks. imagine it's like, uh, how do we do that? Uh, tie them around until we get to where they have to wrap. The previously shown cable. I'm pausing so freaking much. Cables pass through decks to the previously shown cable storage in the Orlop deck. I want to know sales. Yes, 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 yes. I want to know how all the sails work. Uh, you know, obviously these are for forward propulsion, right? But especially like the flying jib, the like all these ones. It, like, is the back one for it like super spinning maneuvers, and uh, the side ones? I don't know. And rigging. This there are what... three masts called the mizzen, main, and fore masts, respectively. Each has various sails which hang from horizontal beams called yards. Since the yards are perpendicular to the masts, this is said to be a square-rigged ship. Triangular stay sails hang between masts to aid in various maneuvers or make better use of available winds. The bowsprit at the front originates from the upper deck below. Flying jib. Extending up and outwards to provide rigging for the foremost sails, called jibs. A driver or spanker sail at the rear is also used for maneuvering, or to balance helm orientation as needed. Was I right? Some yards have studding sail beams that extend laterally with attached sails of the same name for added speed in good weather. Is there a limit to, like, why not, you know, extend it even further and further and more and taller and more and more sails? Is it just, I wonder if, like, you get diminishing returns or if it's just not, the speed is not worth trying to engineer that or, or whatever? For added speed in good weather. The impressive density of these rigging lines can be daunting at a casual glance. Yeah. Let's break things down for easier visualization. I love this video, by the way. 10 out of 10. I subscribed, right? So good. Shrouds support the masts side to side. They extend up from the ship's hull to platforms above and from platforms themselves further up the masts. Dead eyes allow adjustment as lines may stretch over time. That's so smart. Horizontal rat lines in between turn shrouds into rope ladders that sailors will climb to interact with sails and rigging above. Guys, guys, so, uh, so right away, like, I, I look at these and I'm like, what the heck? I'll never understand what the hell those are. But it's just as these slack over time, you can... So these are like the the things at the top of a guitar string where you can like tighten. Is that a good analogy? But that's so, that's so awesome. Horizontal rat lines in between turn shrouds into rope ladders that sailors will climb to interact with sails and rigging above. Stays provide front to back stability. Many of these structural lines are coated in black tar for increased durability against harsh sea life. Finally, the running rigging controls the sails themselves. Let's focus on setting just one sail. Sailors ascend the shrouds and do their work from ropes suspended beneath the yards. When stowed, the sail is lashed neatly to the yard with sections of rope called gaskets. These gaskets are untied and coiled to begin the unfurling. 
front lines run through the sail with leech lines at the sides. These lines are let down, allowing the sail to drape. Clue lines at the corners are then loosed as well, allowing the corner to lower as the sheet line at the back and the tack line at the front are hauled tight. The yard hoist lines are hauled to lift the yard upwards into place. The sail is now fully set. They did it so delicately. I thought it was just like a, like a let loose the rope and it just whoop, falls down. It's like, nope, they're like, oh. oh. The yard is secured to the mast, but can rotate around it. The yard is secured to the mast, but can rotate around it. Yard brace lines at the sides and sheet and tack lines at the corners must be loosed or hauled in careful orchestration to position the sail. The lines for the sail are operated from deck level. So guys, th this this has nothing to do with 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 turning the ship, right? Like this is just th like all of these motions are all to pro to project the ship forward. It's just you have to catch the wind better by by shifting it, right? Any one time to set an up or to dedicate the lines for the sail are operated from deck level. Some may tie off at the shrouds or to dedicated fife rails with many pins for tie off points. It takes all of these lines to set and operate just one sail. Add all other sails to the mix and the amount of rope on deck at any one time becomes enormous. A plus 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 S A plus video is perfect. Glad I found this channel. Did one of you give this to me? If one of you did, Reco Men and to Horatio. I could not have asked for a better video like that. That is, that was so perfect. And I loved every moment of it. Sorry if I paused too much, but that has sort of just what I do. Love y'all. Hope you're all doing well. See you guys next time. Bye.